Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Eternals and Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, Eternals dropped to 59%. It was rotten uh -huh. yesterday and then magically this morning. Uh, we're back up to 60%. But... Yeah, ABC, owned by Disney, is one of the ones that gave it a fresh review that put it back up to 60%. So it's gonna be really interesting to see if it stays fresh or if it goes rotten, but it's unprecedented so far to have a Marvel film uh, even get close to rotten. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even the worst reviewed Marvel film so far has been uh, Thor 2, which I agree is pretty bad. It is. And it was at like 66, 67%. Um, of course, to get rotten, you have to dip below 60%. Mm -hmm. Which it did. And it did. Yesterday. Yep. Took a screenshot. There it is, guys. There it is. The first rotten Marvel movie. And then four more reviews appeared after that. And, so, and, and not all of them are fresh, either. A couple of them were not fresh. ABC puts up their top critic, and it suddenly goes to 60% again. Yeah, Disney-owned ABC. Mm -hmm. There we go. So we're going to talk about this, because this one is really struggling and... Uh, yeah, you know, the consensus seems to be it's a it's a boring movie. Yeah. You know, uh, you know everything is being thrown at you know audiences. That blame is being placed on audiences for review bombing it and all that. Well, they always do that, that, right? But I mean, here's the thing: these outlets, same outlets who are giving it, you know, it reviews, are the ones who are like reporting on, oh, people were review bombing this movie or that movie. Now, I don't think this is review bombing by any means. They're just giving their honest opinion. I just think it's funny that when they drop a score, it's completely fine. But when audiences drop a score, it's review bombing. And I want to point out again that review bombing works both ways. We'll say review bombing or review boosting. Both the same concept. It works both ways. Yeah, so Disney's going to have an uphill battle with this one for sure. And there, there is a lot more competition this fall because a lot of movies mm -hmm. that were being, you know, kind of sat on throughout the pandemic are finally releasing. And uh, this one was probably the, had the least amount of buzz of mm -hmm. any Marvel film ever. You know, like we were even like, oh yeah, we forgot Eternals was even happening. Well, Disney knew it was a problem because when before Shang Chi came out, um, when that movie when Shang, Shang Chi needed like promotion, they they took their their time and effort away from promoting that film and were trying to double down on Eternals. And I remember saying at the time. This is weird because the, the trailers look like shit. It looked boring. People, are, the, the buzz isn't here for this film like, like it is for other ones. Yeah. And now they're taking away the time they should be promoting Shang-Chi to promote this one. So they knew, they knew then it was going to be a problem. And so they doubled down on this when they should have been helping another film, which stood on its own. Yeah, uh, I would be pissed. If I worked on on mm -hmm. Chang Chi for yeah. sure, I'd be like, "Why are you? Why are you already stepping over us and going to the Eternals?" But it tells us that Disney knew there was a problem. Then they've known for months there was a problem here. Anyway, we're gonna talk about that because a lot of the news outlets that normally would be defending the the movie, they're even like, "Yeah, this one's really struggling." Because of course, you know, the, when the critics say it. That's bad. It's gospel. If if viewers say it's bad, it's not. Well, are they going to turn around that if the if the audiences give a bad score, are they going to yell about review, review bombing on, on on like CBR and Screen Rant and these places? Are they going to start screaming about review bombing? No, nah, they'll just start talking about Spider Man, Doctor Strange, mm -hmm. Thor. You know, they'll step over this one. Be like, what happened? Oh gosh, there were lots of problems, but none of them had to do with the fact that the movie was bad mm -hmm. uh you know so let's talk about that before we get into it any further please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys over 239,000 subs thank you so much for the support uh we've been following the eternals and you know look i didn't expect this one to even come close to rotten i mean i honestly thought that it would be in you know, 70s 80s and the well, critics considering are how the it. critics are yeah. yeah yeah i thought the critics would love it it looks boring to us i mean this is the first marvel movie we're probably going to skip Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have no desire to see it. Just not out of protest, not because I'm angry about anything, just because I, I don't care. It's like almost three hours long mm -hmm. and it looks boring as hell. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'll watch it later. We'll give a fair review. We went to go see Shang-Chi. You know, we kind of dunked on that one too, but we went to go see it and we actually said, hey, it was, you know, right, it was right. pretty decent. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible. No, it wasn't I'd terrible. I'd watch it again. And for me, that's saying something. Yeah. So uh, this one though, I don't know. I, I wasn't no, like, like Shang-Chi, the more I, I saw of it, the trailers and stuff, and they actually showed some action. I'm like, yeah, this one might be okay. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it. I, I liked it more than you did, but yeah, I, I yeah. mean, I would watch it again. I have zero desire to see this one. Like, none. I don't even know what's about people from space on a beach. And apparently these two are a thing, and it's about them being a thing. I don't... 
And apparently one of the characters is gay and it's about a thing with, you know, them having a family too. Who, okay. That's been done and, before. Okay. I mean, I don't really care you. about these guys being a thing either. Don't care. I, I don't, I don't. None of them look like their comic book counterparts. I have a really hard time even figuring out who's who. It just I don't like, even know because I, I, I have no idea. It just looks like a bunch of random people in some random sci-fi movie. You know, it doesn't look like a Marvel movie at all. Uh, that being said, uh, even, even Screen Rant. Screen Rant, yeah, trusted media outlets. Oh, Screen the rant. ones who call everybody else have a review bombing, but yeah. it's okay when 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 they say something isn't great. Yeah. Screen Rant admits that Eternals is struggling to stay fresh. Now, this is Screen Rant that's like, oh my God, IMDb, uh, you know, people review bombed it, and oh my God, people review bombing Masters of the Universe, and oh my God, Last of Us, Last of Us Two is getting review bombed, and oh, because you know, it, may, it couldn't just be because something sucked. Yeah, it could be because something sucked. Now, I, in the case of IMDb, I do agree, but we pointed out in the other video, you pointed out that there were more positives for Eternals, and the movie hadn't been released yet. Mm -hmm. So how how yeah. They, they left. They left those two. They up. left the positive. They left the positive. The, yeah. the, the fair thing to do would have been like it hasn't been out yet. We're just not going to post any reviews until it's out. No, no. The two positive ones were allowed to stay. Yeah. So uh, of course the rules are being changed on all these sites now because you know they used to be kind of trusted sources of what you know the critics and the audience has actually thought. Now people are gaming them, and but studios are gaming them. Well, studios well. game stuff all the time. They'll game yeah. things for narrative all the time, and they'll also game things like. Um, you know, they'll, they'll sell, they want people to think, oh, you're missing out if you don't go. So we're, oh, record-breaking sales and stuff for empty seats. Or the, you know, and of course, they totally would go the other way. And if something's being, you know, touted like, you know, oh, we want a narrative that if you don't watch it, you're a bigoted, horrible person. They'll definitely go put people up to putting, you know, those kind of reviews up as well to try to, you know, you never yeah. know what's true anymore. That's at the end of the day. Talk to your friends who went to see it. Talk to trusted people that you know that went to see it. And go by what they say. Because if you go by the media, it's going to be a bunch of shit and spin. And you don't even know. Shit and spin. You don't want to be anywhere near shit and spin. Trust me. That is the worst Christmas toy ever. Shit and spin. Shit and spin. That's yeah. right. I, I, have you ever seen Ghost? Yes. <laughs> that part with the pot? Yeah. Like that, but with shit. Okay. All over the place. That is a shit and spin. There you go. I mean, it, that's all this is. Because you're not going to get you're not going to get a clear view of anything because it's all being manipulated. These media sites are all owned by the studios. It, it's just you know you're never going to get a clear picture from these people. After years in development, Eternals made its highly anticipated world premiere October 18th. I, I don't know if highly anticipated is is the. It wasn't highly used. anticipated. It'll hit theaters on November 5th as part of Phase Four. Since the movie's first teaser was released, Eternals wowed Marvel fans with stunning visuals in an epic multi-dimensional no, story. It didn't. No, it didn't. Actually, it didn't. the trailer kind of landed with a thud. Yeah, it did land with a thud. People were like, what? Uh, however, early reviews have been less than positive. It landed at 64%, which is surprisingly low it's for a Marvel movie. It was 59% yesterday. Yeah, but wait, it gets worse. Over a week since this premiere, and it's finding it hard to stay fresh. It's hard this to... is how you kiss their ass and then give the bad news at the same time. Right. Like, everybody was looking forward to this, guys. It was so great, but unfortunately... Right. Don't be mad at us. Keep, keep the ad money coming. Positive. Positive. It dipped to 59%. You have picks. We'll go out to your article making it the first ever MCU film to have a rotten score on the website. Eternals is currently at 60, thanks to the help of ABC. Mm -hmm. uh, our friends over at ABC with a total of 119 reviews. Well, making it's 120 it... reviews now. Okay, we got to get another one in there just to make sure. Let's just hit refresh here and make sure we're not rotten. Nope, we're still fresh. You don't want to be rotten. They you know, were just enough to make sure it got back to 60 and then it stopped. You know, wearing spandex on the beach, you might be not so fresh. Mm -hmm. You might be not so fresh. Um, yeah, so Dark World was a 66%. Yeah. Most reviews praised Eternals for its elaborate world building, but criticized it for its overly complex and somewhat confusing plot. No, but it's boring as fuck. Mm -hmm. That's what they all said. The, the movie's boring. And the ones that said it was positive said that Zhao delivered a unique superhero film. That's your. That's what you say, like, you know, when you have something that's a big mess in front of you and someone looks really, really, really shitty, right? And they're trying to say, do I look nice? And you're like, well... 
your 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 eye makeup spot on or you know uh well your bangs look good you know it's kind of like that she's got a great personality <laughs> right right i mean um, she yeah. might have done really well with other movies and, and she might do very very well with a different type of genre that doesn't necessarily mean that this is something that she'd be good at yeah i'm surprised they put it right there right there in the trusted media mm -hmm. not like us <laughs> Eternals is coming after two highly successful Marvel films. So it's going to be okay, guys. It's going to be okay. Black Widow and Shang-Chi, yeah, 92% and 79%. It's crucial to know. Well, I would agree that Shang-Chi is better than Black Widow. I would agree with that. I, I actually, would agree with that. I have zero desire to see Black Widow again. I thought it was kind of boring. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it definitely wasn't great. Um, Shang-Chi, I, I think, was more entertaining overall. Um, they said that the tomato stand can still dramatically change once the film opens in theaters. Once the film opens in theaters and the audience score comes in, which is much easily more much more easily manipulated. The sun will come out tomorrow. Yeah. <sighs> always look on the bright side. I love it when it's easily manipulated to the good. It's always completely true and fun and real, and that's the real ones. But if it's manipulated to the bad, it's uh, it's just review bombing terrible people. If this if this had a uh, critical score of like eighty five percent and the audience score is fifty nine percent, there would be an article like this. Oh my god, oh my god, the alt right's taking over Rotten Tomatoes again, guys. Mm -hmm. They have. Oh my god, first they went after Last of Us two because they don't like girls in games, and then then they went after the Eternals because there's a gay guy, even though. I don't even think anybody knew he's gay because it's just like it's just there's so many people I can't keep. I don't track think of people them. really care. Nobody you know, cares. I mean, and that's kind of what you want, isn't it? You want it to be the place where it's so commonplace that you don't even think anything of it. You would think that would be that would, would be think. a good thing. You would think, but no, no, no. It's like He Man. It's just that that's the alt right. Mm -hmm. The alt right doesn't like He Man without He Man. Bunch of haters. <laughs> I know, right? What the hell? I'd anyway. love to see what they would do if it was the Shira show, but it was about all about Bo. Or Seahawk. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get the rights and then we're going to. No, make the, no, we're not. The we're bow the and Seahawk. No. If we ever get, if we ever, which would never happen because they'd never give them to us. If we ever got the rights to do something with Shira, it would be an actual show about Shira. And it would be a right Shira. And, and, an, an all right Shira. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. It oh would my be God. proper Shira. I think that that was hilarious. I don't know if you guys saw the video we did. Uh, yesterday, but we actually got a hold of what's supposed to be the the pitch for Netflix Shira. Go watch the video if you haven't watched it. And she, the original design, she looked like classic Shira. Right, and Catcher wasn't her girlfriend. Catcher was her like her, like her annoying sister. And she wasn't a furry either. She looked like classic Catcher. Mm -hmm. And something went wrong. I don't know what the hell happened, but uh, it it actually looked much better on paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I think than what we got anyway. Uh, there we go, guys. Uh, this is going to be really interesting. I actually think the score is going to drop because I remember this kind of happening with The Rise of Skywalker where the trusted media outlets got early access and it didn't go rotten right away. They were pissed because it, they, they threw Ryan Johnson's stunning and brave story out. Even people who uh, you know, didn't like The Last Jedi were like, this is still an incomprehensible mm -hmm. mess of a movie. And it was. You know, uh, what I've seen of it, I mean, again, I have not sat through the whole movie. I've watched clips of it, and I'm like, just the clips I've seen of Rise of Skywalker, I don't know what the hell is going on. Well, I think The Eternals had an uphill battle for a couple of reasons. One, it was a property a lot of people didn't know. Now, we've seen it before, Guardians of the Galaxy, Shang-Chi and stuff, but they had too much they were trying to shove into this story. And they brought a director in who's really, really great at certain things. Uh, Mar I don't think like a Marvel type film is her strength. Um, she's better at like personal storytelling and things like that, which works on some genres. I don't know if it translates to the MCU. Um, so they had a lot of things that they were working with that it was a perfect storm of, of things that were gonna lead to it. Eh. I'm just sitting there thinking, like, this made as much sense as bringing in the Coen brothers or something to do a Marvel movie. Like, it was like, yeah, it don't get, like, an indie... I thought it was a weird choice. I think they were trying... I don't know. I thought they thought, well, maybe we'll appeal to China, not knowing that China doesn't like her. Yeah, that wasn't... That was like, oh, oh, she's Chinese. We're, we're, this is a movie for China. Oh, God, China hates her. Oh. Yeah, and I want to point out again, too, because I, I have no love for Bob Chapek, but this would have been approved on Iger's Watch. Yep, yep. Um, so anyway, uh, going to be very interesting to watch it. I do think it's going to drop to rotten again. Uh, I don't, you don't want to say, I don't know. It's more I fun don't. just watching the roller coaster that it is. Um, and the media try like, 
and the media, this. yeah. Explain and this. And the media guys. T- saying it was the best of times, it was the worst of times within like two days of each other. You know, that's what's more fun to me. I just get popcorn anymore and just sit back and laugh at the whole thing because it's so stupid. And I'm just really effing tired of it. And you know what? The best thing they could do at this point is just admit, hey, it's going to be a loss. We can't win them all. Let's move on. Yeah, and eventually, you know, Marvel, they were bound to have a Yeah, they can't all be winners, you know? Now you know how DC feels. (laughs) Yeah, There you go, guys. Now you can empathize with DC, right? It's it's like you win some, you lose some. Uh, All right, so we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.